Welcome to Bad Gear, the show about the world's most hated audio tools. After redirecting the money for a nice 2018 weekend trip, spending a couple of years in my own private Electron bootcamp and embracing the limitations breed creativity zen, I've become quite an avid DigiTucked user. However, today we are going to talk about the Boss DR5. This 1994 drum machine looks suspiciously similar to the Swedish Mono Sampler, so after rumors of DigiTucked discontinuation started swirling a while back, I might as well take a look at this cheapskate alternative. At the first glance, the DR5 is ticking all the online too. boxes. The aforementioned digitact shaped enclosure is graced by an abundance of rubber buttons. <laughs> which, on closer inspection, turn out to be arranged like a guitar fretboard. Blasphemy, not unlike the costly Electron machine, it is sample based, but in this case tacky early 90s sounds are forever engraved in the digital slates that are the ROM chips of the unit. Daddy Rock drums and a small selection of TR staples are nice. But there are also plenty of acoustic instruments, bottom shelf Roland pianos, and a few slightly underwhelming synth sounds. These tones can be panned, pitched, there's a basic envelope, but I was missing FX and filters. As you might have guessed, the feature set of the DR5 goes well beyond normal drum machine duties. One drum set and three chromatically playable voices can be combined to a kit accessible via MIDI or the internal sequencer. The latter comes with a few amenities, even some contemporary machines are missing. Polyphonic MIDI recording, microtiming, multiple layers of accent, and patterns of up to four bars are welcome additions to the expected basics like swing, quantization, song mode, and modes for step and real-time recording. Roland went all in on the guitar-centric UI. Even though I have a dark past of dabbling with a good old six-string myself, the layout didn't cater to my muscle memory, but the additional buttons for transposition, staccato and tenuto are a nice touch. You can actually hook up a guitar, the built-in amp simulator is not exactly a camper, and the pitch tracking feature might foster the creativity of non-guitar players too. There's no way to record audio. Quite similar to the accompaniment keyboards of yesteryear, the instrument is equipped with enough canned chords to make it through desafinado. As we are talking about vintage Roland prosumer gear, you will have to stop playback more often than you want, but 19 voices of polyphony are generous compared to some more recent products and integrating the machine into a setup as both a sound module and sequencer centerpiece works like a charm. There are no surprises on the rear panel, the display is functional and I'd totally rely on one of these babies during a post-apocalyptic rave given the battery compartment and confidence inspired build quality. Did I mention they are cheap? The Boss DR5 is a surprisingly capable vintage sequencer plagued by an incurable case of corny rompler disease. Can it help you to penny pinch your way through acute fits of electron gas? You have already heard the drum machine in today's intro tune. Comforting like a generous serving of instant mac and cheese. Let's spice it up a bit with a few FX pedals and more capable Roland sound generators. <laughs>
affordable Roland slash boss gear came a long way, at least sound-wise. Compared to more modern sequences, the workflow is archaic, but gets the job done once you wrap your head around the ancient philosophy. Without a doubt, the internal sounds are a limiting factor. Time to create a real-life setup that might hold up on dance floors past and present. <laughs> Bitte. With a little processing, the generic set of 90s samples can stand its ground even in the presence of Waldorf and Yomok Sims. The sequencer was not designed for live performances, so the addition of more hands-on gear like filters and maybe even a little mixer will make your life easier. I wanna know if we can make it sound pro with the blessings of the DAW in a you call it artifact, I call it mojo, GM-friendly electric boogaloo body music. even more similarities between DR5 and Digitact than the form factor suggests. A home studio centerpiece based on mono samples with questionable limitations like 4 bar patterns, stereo outputs and a healthy dose of RTFM. However, as we are still talking about a 30 year old piece of budget gear, it is no surprise that it doesn't offer the pristine sound quality and sci-fi beat making experience people like me are spending big bucks on, which isn't necessarily a disadvantage. The little boss was designed with traditional musicians in mind, so if you can live with a dated sound and oftentimes ponderous UI, it might suit your way of making music better than the trigless p locks laden workflow of the Digitect. Electron disciples and hopeless gear addicts will accept no substitutes, but in the end both units are literally capable of collecting the same amount of dust. Thanks for watching and see you next time! Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the episode, feel free to like, subscribe, become a patron and leave a comment what other kind of gear you would like to see and hear on the show.